We all know that Disney has shifted their focus to remakes and sequels. In the past couple of years, Disney has released 10 animated films where over half are remakes or sequels. And there are already more in the works. So, why is that? We can get an idea if we rewind back to 2011 and see the biggest Hollywood flop of all time, Mars Needs Moms. In this film, we follow this kid named Milo that's a brat to his mom, and after she is abducted and taken away to Mars, he goes to rescue her. There, he meets Grippo, who is pretty much just a fat, lonely dude that takes Milo under his wing. Later, they meet Grippo's love interest, Kai, and they find out that Mars actually had traditional families rather than robots caring for their young. The final act shows Milo saving his mom and Mars returning back to his traditional family way of living. The film really has three separate stories being told at once. The first being that we should appreciate our moms and treat every day that we have with them special. The second is that the minor character finding purpose with his love interest in the Martian Kai. The last storyline and also the most interesting is that Mars doesn't actually need moms but it needs families. So how did they lose over a hundred million dollars on this? The art style for this film is just so weird and unsettling that it turns people away but you can see why they chose to go in this direction. Previous films such as The Polar Express, and A Christmas Carol actually did really well and used a really similar art style, so Disney just saw this as a big dollar sign. Yeah! Kids just don't like to see this sort of stuff, because it just looks so weird. They just want to see giant fur on pets and shit. Not only was the art style the big turnoff for most, but the marketing for this project was just not there. This is really weird for Disney since when they dump $150 million into a film, you'd think you'd see an ad for it everywhere. Mars Needs Moms is a different story mainly because there's no real marketable character to show off. I mean, their most unique looking character is Grippo, and no kid is going to want to go see a movie after getting triple chin in their Happy Meal. Oh my gosh! Also, there's just no real recognizable talent in the entire film. I mean, in The Secret Life of Pets alone, there's a list of recognizable actors. I mean, we got Louis C.K., we got Kevin Hart, we got Ellie Kempler, we got Jenny Slate, Eric Stone Street, and the list goes on. In Mars Needs Moms, we just have a bunch of nobodies. The lead actor is played by Seth Green, who is best known for his role in Austin Powers, where he plays Dr. Evil's kid. Hello, Scott. Hi. In most film, most of the budget goes straight for the talent, just so you can attach a face to the film. However, in Mars Needs Mom, most of the budget went right to the development of the film. Every character was motion captured, and the environmental design of the film is actually really well done. There are some really beautiful shots in the film, and the story really isn't too much to cry over, especially for a kids movie. But when we take a step back and we compare budgets between Mars Needs Moms and other films, we can really see what went wrong. And it's really a shame because the film isn't actually half bad. It really just comes down to the audience. This is aimed at kids and it just looks weird. The title also has its problems since according to studio execs on Mars Needs Moms, boys don't want to watch something that has the word mom in it. Not only is the title screwed, but the movie is also just dark. We find out that Grippo's mom was also abducted when he was a kid and he literally watched her die. Also, all of the male kids are abandoned and thrown down into this Mars version of a junkyard. And the idea of losing your mom to aliens sounds crazy, but little kids will believe that and parents just don't want to deal with it. If you look past the dark storyline, the lack of recognizable talent, and the garbage art style, there's actually a film worth watching. The theme feels tangible and something that I would want the next generation to take away. The characters teach us lessons that can apply to you no matter how old you are, and the values it passes along are valuable to note. But should you watch it? Hell no, motherfucker!